Okay, so I think most of you out there can solve this basic math word problem, but here is kind of the uh, extra challenge of this particular problem, and it is this. Can you figure this thing out in your head, i.e. no calculator, uh, paper, or pencil? Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem because I think if you focus in here, I believe a lot of you will be able to figure this out in your brain. But let me go ahead and read the problem. It is, you start an eight-hour work shift at 6 p.m. If you have 25% more time to finish, what time is it? All right, so that's the problem. Again, the only rules here, no calculator, paper, pencil, pen, none of that stuff. All you need is your supercomputer, and it's located right there in between your ears. And uh, don't doubt yourself here. I think a lot of you will be able to figure this out. Now, I am going to show you the answer in just one second, but I'm going to give you some kind of mental math uh, techniques that you could use to figure this out if, in fact, you don't uh, get the problem right. But here's the thing. Even if you can't do this in your brain, but you can do this using a calculator or a paper or pencil, at least do it that way. All right, so uh, before we get started, though, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if you enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so do you have your answer ready? Well, hopefully you do, but let's go ahead and take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer is 12 a.m. or midnight. All right, now if you're able to do this all inside your brain, well, that is super impressive. We must celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional math wizard with a very, very powerful supercomputer in between your ears. And probably none of your, uh, all of your friends and uh, family will be like, yeah, yeah, I always knew you were good at math. So what? But uh, anyways, listen, good job. And again, you know, the whole point of this video is to practice doing basic calculations in your brain. OK, that's a very useful thing. There are going to be um, plenty of times where you want to do some calculations very, very fast, like very quick in your brain. And I think, you know, if you keep your uh, what you want to do down to like two or three at most kind of calculations, I think your brains can handle that. And here's the thing. It's like an exercise or a skill or a muscle where if you don't practice you know, doing calculations in your brain, basic mental calculations, you get rusty on these things, okay? So don't feel bad if you didn't get this, if you didn't get this right. I'm gonna show you a couple of ways that I thought about this. Uh, but you know, again, this is kind of a creative uh, process as well. You could have come up with this answer using a uh, completely different method. But let's go ahead and get into uh, the problem right now. Okay, so we have a math word problem and in general, uh, when you read a problem, just don't read it once. Read it at least three times, okay? So make sure you understand the problem. And again, uh, here, uh, you know, we have a uh, eight-hour work shift. We start at 6 p.m., and we have 25% more time to finish. What is the time? Okay, what time is it when we only have 25% more time to uh, finish uh, our shift? Now, uh, typically in most math word problems, you want to model that. And of course, you know, having a piece of paper and a pencil, you know, comes in pretty handy so you can model that. But here you have to kind of do some sort of visual model, right? So, you know, you have to think about it. You're like, well, what does this mean? Well, this is the way, you know, in my brain, I would be thinking about it. Now, this is, you know, somewhat complex. But, you know, uh, this is the way, you know, you know, my brain works and yours probably works pretty similar to mine. OK, so I'm like, all right, well, it's six o'clock right now and I have to do my, you know, finish this work shift out. So I have eight hours to go until I'm completely done from six o'clock, right from six uh, p.m. I got to go eight hours until I'm done. Right. So I'm like, yes, I'll be uh, off work finally now. Uh, the problem is you have 25% more time remaining. Okay, so in your head, like, all right, eight hours, I have 25% more time remaining until I'm done. So I want to know what time is it uh, when I only have 25% uh, more time to go. But hopefully, a lot of you kind of picked up on it, like, well, if I have 25% uh, more time to finish until I'm done, 
that means I already worked 75% of my shift, right? So I'm like, well, from 6 p.m., I already worked 25% or 75% uh, of my shift or 75% of eight hours, okay? So if I could figure out what 75% of eight hours is, that's uh, at the actual time, okay? Because here, if I'm like in my brain, well, if I figure out what 25% of eight hours is, then I got to do some extra sub, uh, subtraction, right? This might be a little bit more direct path, but you could also have gone this way, all right? And that's what makes mental math, you know, creative because some of you could have figured out, all right, I'm going to figure out what 25% is. You know, there's multiple different easy paths to take, okay? There's no one way. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what I'm going to do. And if you did it this way, that's great. So uh, I'm thinking to myself, you know, it's probably easier just to figure out 75% of eight hours. Okay, so that is the question. 75% of eight or eight hours is what? Well, again, we're doing mental math here. I'm going to show you two approaches you could take. So instead of answering this question right off the bat, 75% of eight hours, I might think to myself, well, what's one half of eight? Well, one half of eight is four right? And one half is the same thing as 50%, right? So if I said 50% of eight, it's the same thing as one half of eight. So 50% of eight is four, okay? And some of you, you know, can clearly just figure things out like this. Well, 50% of eight is four. Now, where am I going with this? Well, let's take that 50% and divide it by two, okay? So if 50% of eight is four, well, then if I take that 50% and divided by two, I have 25%. So 25% of eight is going to be four divided by two as well. So 25% of eight is two. Now this is kind of a longer way to do this. I'll show you a much simpler approach uh, from a mental math uh, standpoint, but you can break down percentages in your brain like this because we're trying to figure out what 75% of eight is. So you might be saying, all right, well, 50% of eight is four, 25% of eight is two. And then you can kind of just think of, of it this way, right? 50% of 8 is 4, 25% of 8 is 2. So if I add these together, 75% of 8 is 4 plus 2 is uh, 6, okay? So again, all different sorts of ways uh, to figure this out. Now, again, we haven't even answered the question, but the first part to get the answer is figuring out what 75% of 8 is. Okay, but once I have that, then I can, you know, it's pretty easy to answer the question. Now, I'm going to show you another approach to find out what 75% of 8 is, which was uh, which is much more effective, in my opinion. But before I do that, I am going to ask you to subscribe to my channel. Okay, this really does help me out. But my uh, objective is to help others. By you doing this, really, it does allow me to reach other people that are interested in math or need uh, assistance in math. Okay, and it's really, uh, you know, as I kind of said in my intro here, it's my passion to help people not fail math, okay, particularly. I mean, I love uh, people who like math, you know, they want to learn math, and they, you know, never really maybe had too many uh, struggles in math. But I'm really trying to um, help those people that are on the verge of giving up on math, okay. And hopefully this is the first time they found my channel. My objective is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way, okay. But anyways, by you subscribing, it does help me find other folks. And if you're going to do that, might as well hit that notification bell so you can get my latest videos as well. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, talk about another way you can figure out what the 70, uh, what 75% of eight is equal to. And this is a far easier way, in my opinion. So 75%, you could be like, well, right, let me see here. 75% is the same thing as three-fourths as a fraction, okay? Now, just to kind of, uh, you know, go over this from a technical standpoint, to convert a percent to a fraction, you simply put it over 100, okay? So 75%. Uh, as a fraction, put it over 100, and then you can reduce this fraction, 75 over 100, to the fraction 3 fourths. Now, I'm trying to figure out what 75% of 8 is. So anytime you want to find the percent of a number, typically what you can do, right, if you have your calculator, you could just convert this 75% to a decimal 0.75 and multiply by the number. But you don't have to uh, always just, you know, uh, change it to a decimal. You can change it to a fraction and multiply by the number, and that's what I'm uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to do here, okay? All right, so here we go. 75% as a fraction is 3 fourths. I'm going to multiply by this number, which, of course, is 8. 
And so you might say, well, this is, you know, I got to do this fraction of math in my brain. Well, three fourths times eight or eight over one. So you got to hold that in your brain and be like, all right, eight, uh, say four goes into eight two times, and then three times two is six. Okay. So again, basic math here. This is not a difficult calculation, in my opinion. You know, of course, I find it easy to do this in my brain, but, you know, I practice mental math calculations. Okay. I don't want to say I practice like in a formal way, but, you know, oftentimes I'll just do the problem. I'll do something in my brain and then I'll be like, yeah, let me double check myself with the calculator. But what I'm getting at is if you don't practice some of these mental calculations, and I'm talking real basic kind of calculations, you're never going to get better at this. And I think this is um, also very helpful just to keep your mind sharp. You're kind of, your, you know, you're thinking, you know, really, um, you know, uh, just keeping your brain active. Let's just say that much, right? Okay, so three-fourths of uh, eight. Again, we're going to take that four, divide it into this eight. That's two, so three times two is six. All right, so those are two approaches you can um, uh, take to figure out 75% of eight. Now, you could have, by the way, have 25% uh, of eight, right? So you're like, well, what I did was I took 25% of eight, and you could do that as well, because 25% of eight, 25% is the same thing as one-fourth times eight, okay, which is, of course, two hours, right? So that's another approach as well. But if you have the number of hours already worked, well, I think it's a little bit easier to calculate what time it is, right? Okay, so we just figured out that 75% of your shift uh, uh, worked is six hours, right? So 75% 75 of an eight-hour shift is six hours. So what time is it? Well, if you're at 6 p.m. and you work six hours, that's going to be 6 plus 6 or 12 a.m. midnight. Okay, you have two more hours to go, so it would be done at 2 a.m. But uh, here... You could have been like, well, all right, if you've got two, right, if you had the 25% of the two hours, then you would have to do what? Well, you would have to subtract it away from the eight, uh, eight hours, and you'd still have six hours, right? So, you know, kind of an extra calculation. But either way, as long as you, you know, figure this out in your brain, and there's probably an infinite many other ways uh, that you could have thought about this. But here's the thing, right? In the, you know, when it comes to mental math, no one's grading your work other than whether you got this, you know, you're able to answer it correctly or not. You know, no one's going to go into, inside your brain and, you know, say, well, you didn't think about this, right, even though you uh, got the answer right. Well, that's the great thing about, you know, doing mental calculations because our brains all work a little bit different. Okay, so if you got this right, that again, that is fantastic. Now, if you're struggling with some of the basic math concepts here, uh, don't uh, despair. Let me give you a couple suggestions if you want to improve your basic math skills. One, I have a ton of additional videos like this on my YouTube channel that you can kind of go through and, and you know play around with the math there. Now, if you want some uh, kind of formal instruction, some basic math review, check out my Math Foundations course. I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video. It's like a little mini math boot camp, and that will really kind of um, uh, be a great refresher for basic math skills, for those of you that kind of want to get back into mathematics. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.